I was randomly thinking because I heard um, Skepta's got a new tune. Yeah, I dropped today. To yeah, it's hard. Still. What? Which one? It's called DJ. It's called Pure Water, isn't it? Oh, I kind of like that. Song. I thought you were talking about athlete. That's that's boy better knowing it. Oh, oh, no, that no. tune's hard still. Yeah. So not to take away from mm. the song, athlete's but then athlete's hard. I've been gassed in my room before I go to gym. You know, I sat that tune on. That tune's a big tune, you know. Can you hear a secret? Yeah, it was solo on the hook, you know. It's what? Oh man, <laughs> I hate, I hate, oh man. Yeah. When I first heard it, because I first heard it at the boy, it's not even a secret, everyone heard it. Yeah, it was solo on the hook, that's not a secret, fucking I was on stage. But yeah, I heard solo on the hook and I was like, and then when I saw Goldie, it was like, show me. I can't even remember. No, he wasn't. But it was his voice, so I remember, his, I remember hearing his voice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Run like an athlete, and I heard them. I remember them well, talking, singing over it, and well, I was like, solo. They all performing oh, it. Yeah. It was the last song they did. Oh shit, that's right. I remember. I that. think I left actually. After you had left by yeah. then. Yeah, you left early. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. When they done that song, I was jogging. Sorry, I cut you off. Apologies. Pure water. Yeah. Yeah. Pure water. Crazy. Yeah. I, I want to talk about that quickly, but then it, all you know me. I'm in my car. I'm listening to this song, whatever, and I don't know how I got here. Mm. But then I started listening to um I started to listen to Visions from Skepta. Then on that EP there's a song called Worst and then I heard Section Boys. And then I thought cuz you know I love Swift from Section Boys in it yeah. I love Swift. And then I thought hold on a minute. What happened to these man? Like what happened to them? Because the reason why I asked that question, yeah, is because I think I've said it before. I feel like enough men are rapping like Swift right now, yeah. And like... Getting away with it. Yeah. And then like, I just feel like I'm hearing so much of Section Boys, but I'm not hearing Section Boys. And But with everything that's going on with that sort of sound, shouldn't Section Boys really be all the way up here with it? Though really, and be your f- and be fathers yeah. for man, and Hundreds. which then made me go to this because you know, again, I'm in my train of thought thinking. I started thinking back to the time. Obviously, they did their um, thing at Village Underground. Drake came out, sick moment Amazing. for them. Drake knew the whole bar, everything. That's Amazing. the moment that I think that was one of the moments where I said, "Man, can't chat to me about Drake no more. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear about this whole thing of." You know, this does he care about you? Like sh- he knows more bars than you, so don't chat to me about <laughs> none of that. But then I thought, are Section Boys the only ones, really, who have hasn't been able to particularly get that moment? You know, like when Drake gives you a look, kind of. Mm. It does, kind of. You know what I mean? It does give you an extra bit of profile because of how big he is are they the only ones who never got any be- like benefited from it because i look at georgia smith it. i look at georgia georgia smith out here killing it to bits mm. yeah. oh by the way anyway that's the next thing um skepta um uh who else has there been here i know there was section boys then you could say the countless american acts that he's kind of jumped on from early and no i'm not saying that he's the person who has um um propelled their career because that's not no, what i'm saying just about these the are all the factor. artists that have already been existing and doing their thing gigs, or whatnot but gigs and... gigs as oh, well hey, so hey. like these are all acts that have then gone on to go on to the next phase of killing it mm. section boys haven't done that the killer is i know too much about that situation to, to speak about it so oh so there's a situation then I'm not saying the situation, I just know too much about section boys and what's going on. So why can't we talk about it? Because I don't feel like, unless they've gone and publicly spoke about it, I think they're going to talk about it, it's a bit unfair. So, but all I will say is, I just think, and this is what I learned from what I'm doing, you know when things are going a little bit weird in your life, and just in general, go back to the last existing memory you have of things going smoothly. Oh. And see what was going on around then. Yeah, yeah. And it's musically is always a good because there's so many transitions within music. The moment you're not enjoying it or things are a bit weird, just think about what's in and around you energy wise. Because the energy that was around you was what was contributing to you making that particular sound at that time. I definitely understand we all grow and so on and so forth, but sometimes I think certain energies come into a, a situation and 
it doesn't benefit the situation. If anything, mm. it either holds it back or it makes it confusing and mm. so on and so forth. And I just think that's uh, Dave always... Dave was another one as well, by the uh, way. Who? Dave was another one. Dave propelled, boy. Yeah. So that's what I, I just think, like... I, you, yeah, so you, I just think... you look at Dave, for example. <laughs> Drake comes into a situation with Dave and he's looked after by someone that is your friend and someone I've got a huge amount of respect for. I just think someone like that knows what to do with that yeah, situation. Yeah, smart management, isn't it? He's just, he's, Benny's just, he's just smart too management. smart. He knows what how to manoeuvre from that moment and that's testament to him and to Dave because Dave clearly knows what to do as well. Yeah. He knows what music to make. He knows he's still killing it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I look at other people. And then you look at those other artists I feel like aside from management but stylistically they kind of know where they are going with it as well like, like Skepta. gigs hey like Skepta that's a that's a, a good example and I think Skepta, stylistically he knows exactly where he's going and why Skepta is one of the most special individuals for me anyway yes I'm biased I've made that clear last week but for me it's because <laughs> he just won't go into Skepta musically he'll go into Skepta as a person so the things that you see him profit of from getting attention is more than music because his purpose and his role within our scene is to show people this is more than music. Oh yeah, I'm gonna drop a trainer. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be in this film. Oh yeah, I'm gonna like. I'm, oh yeah, I'm gonna go and do this fashion walk and I'm gonna do this massive collaboration with Nike where I'm gonna do a second trainer now. And he begins to open up and becomes this brand that you just respect. Mm. Like I look at Skepta. Kanye West was saying it on an interview, and it's so true. I look at Skepta as a business. Yeah, yeah, of course as a business so if a record label you can't sign Skepta you have to come work alongside him Colla yeah you have, to, Nike you have can't. to collaborate none of you lot can you have to collaborate he's worth bread and so, and that's the way he should be because he shouldn't be looked at as Skepta the individual he's an individual in his own right away from that look at him as a business mm. and his business for me out of a lot of people are incredible absolutely incredible I just feel that section should be fathers for man right now and if if not Swift should be out here doing a complete madness. And in because, yeah, yeah. Well, like again, even that section boys to me, and maybe this might be coming out of a bit of ignorance, yeah. But to me, they felt like one of the only crews, the new ones, that had different styles within it. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, ev like everyone sounded different or had a different style. Whereas I feel like. For me, a lot of the new crews that are coming out what now, everyone sounds the same. So it's like all the styles are just, you You rap exactly like this one and this one raps like that one and that one raps exactly like this one. And in fact, all of you just rap like Swift. That's mad. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? 100%. But yeah, I just thought about it like today and I just, I thought, rah, like I wonder what, like what's going on with these men? And I hope that they are able to, kind of find their feet or at least a few of them are able to find their feet and do something and then it just made the bigger I just had a, a, the bigger conversation in my head of rah like this is probably for me even though my brain I'm not very good at holding or retaining certain information sometimes I need to check stats and all of these type of things but I was mm. thinking when was the last time Jake jumped on a record with somebody or gave somebody some type of look and that that particular artist or artists never went on to the next thing, and they were the only ones I could think of because it wasn't in like it wasn't it wasn't worldwide. in the UK both. Nah, there's a bag of. Well, yeah, just tell me because I'm just thinking. Just tell me that he's collaborated with that haven't really gone on to. Because I love oh, McConan. Mate. I didn't even know who this brother. I'm not saying he obviously existed. He obviously existed, but that look went all of, even the Migos. Oh, Versace. 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 After yeah, that, yeah, yeah. after, after the, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. after the, that was the biggest one. That's got to be the but biggest one. The difference, the, the right, big cool. difference is the big difference is he never jumped helpful. on a record with Section Boys. He never. So mm. maybe it's, it's that's a false equivalency, and I accept that. But it wasn't that Drake just went there and did his tune. He stood at the side and said the whole like not even just a little bit. In he said well. more of it than I knew. He knew the end. This song is all seven minutes long, fam. My man was there. Knew the whole lot. Someone else told me inside information or whatever when he was at the Brits prior to going to that show in the dressing room. That's what's bumping. That's what's bumping. It was genuine love, innit? 
So I know that the equivalencies are obviously different because he didn't jump on the record and that. But I still, I still feel like there's a, a conversation. You're saying him. when I, when he's beside him, the thing is that it, obviously it's, the dynamics to each situation are completely different. But I still understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But Drake has stood al- stood alongside some people, and it hasn't worked out for them. And I just feel like maybe for the same reasons as well, isn't it? And some people have had a career before. And but they've never really broke. Like I remember, I remember when Drake done a collaboration with Marion. I think I can't remember the name of the song. Something is an interlude anyway. And I thought, wow, if this is going to be a Marion's new sound, mm. I can't wait to hear his new stuff. And the only thing after that that I remember loving was M.I.A. And I know we done the grocery song and all of that stuff. But like, the but only you know thing... why I think that maybe a tiny bit different. No, you it's agree different. That a, 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 a Marion peaked kind of already though. No, I with didn't, B2K, I didn't think he did at all. I felt like he. I thought. I feel. Amarian, and this is from a distance. I don't know anything. I feel like he was poorly managed, and that's the reason why that situation didn't. went where yeah. it did. You know, I'm coming from. And there's other acts that have stood beside Drake, um, who have had a career. Janae Aiko, but, but she, she was grew, already out. Here. But she, but I agree. When you, you know hear I mean? from time, some people were just that was their entry point to her. Yeah. Like before that, like, even she had July. July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I. Uh, found but out Drake, about her. yeah, but Drake wasn't Drake then anyway. Well, that's how I found out about her though through Drake, 100. percent it was on a pr- it was like on an early project okay. from Drake and I was like wow this girl yeah. she's dope and then I got her tape as well you Kendrick's know you know I'm that. an R&B done so I knew about Janae still come on like, fam come on I knew about Mila J early and that yeah. sister yeah yeah Mila J's cold I just feel like Drake gets you Janae's here. better though but yeah, yeah. She's better, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. She's, always Janae's better. better than that. Man. I just think Drake gets you here and then what you do with it is up to you. And if you yeah, don't manage to monopolise yeah, yeah. on it, I think you only have yourself to blame because God God save the world if Drake takes me there. Fam, <laughs> I'm being in your faces for 10 years strong. I'm still fucking off. That's my promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. for them 10 years, <laughs> woo, fam, my phone's going to be blowing up because I'm just going to be saying, ah, it doesn't really matter anyway, fam. Yeah. I'm fully looking forward to Drake's new project anyway, so... Um, I'm looking forward to Kanye's more I won't lie yeah well yeah I'm really looking forward to Kanye's project especially after the two after the uh, after that two hour interview I realised one thing about Kanye you can't go and do a 15 minute interview no you can't you don't have the ability to articulate yourself yeah under that much pressure a quick time because when I go and watch that half an hour TMZ thing and then I go and watch that two-hour interview of Charlemagne. I'm yeah. watching two different Kanye's. Yeah, I've, do you know what? I, I there's a part of me that really felt like I wish I had seen everything before we recorded that podcast because I hadn't even seen the Charlemagne interview. Mm-hmm. I'd only seen. But 20 the Charlemagne interview of that. wasn't out. It was. Was it out? Yeah, because I'd only seen twenty minutes of it. Did I watch it by then? No, you, you was watching it afterwards because I saw you snap it. Yeah, to be fair, I'm glad I've watched it the way I watched it because I've learned what I've no, learned. No, I'm glad I did too, but I'm saying in in the context of like recording the podcast, that's all. Because it was all still very fresh. I just didn't have the time. Do you know what? Because we got a lot of tweets of people saying, oh, this and that. And I, I still stand by what I say because we said obviously he's mentally ill and some people are like, how yeah. can you say that? And I'm like, well, he actually said it himself. So it makes it easier for me to say it, to be yeah, yeah, totally yeah. honest with you. Um, but in regards to the actual message, bruv, it's lost in translation. And that's the reason why I think probably Jay had to step away from him because yeah. Kanye went with Jay because he felt Dame Dash didn't have the ability to articulate himself. So he said, you know what? Let me just learn from Jay and then I'll be able to articulate myself. Yeah. But in that Charlemagne interview, the he was, way he, he was speaks, really good. he was incredible. He was really good. And I think Charlemagne nailed it as well with like nailed a lot of it. questions that he asked and stuff. And Charlemagne was really almost good. Like a, Really, really, really good. good, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. he's really good. It was almost like a therapy session. To a, de- to a degree, like Ooh, watching them. That house and as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that like, that really showed, that really, that really showed a level of finesse that Charlemagne has. Do you know what I mean? Being able to actually sit there, clear your mind and have a conversation with someone that you have watched for their whole career and you want to make an understanding of certain things and just, and letting them speak. And Kanye, and what I liked as well is that the difference between the TMZ one and this interview with Charlemagne was that, for example, when Charlemagne asked him some questions, sometimes we'd pause. He didn't do that in TMZ. No, nah. bro. And when you and you pause and then you think about what you're gonna say and then you start, then you say things. And I think that, that was good. he's the, he's a person who, because I think for me, yeah, if mm. I the way that I am, if I 
I'm a lot like that too. And I feel that if I'm in a place where I'm not a hundred percent correct, yeah, but I go somewhere and I'm just speaking, I'm gonna just say some mad stuff. Not that a mad. Bunch. Not that e- mad. We can't of course not. Of course, course not that mad. Too mad for not that mad. But I'm still gonna say some stuff, and afterwards I'm gonna think, fuck, like I could have said this so much better. But when I'm able to, sp- when I'm able to pause and then respond, think. I'm always proud of what I say after that. Do you get me? I respect and that. there was so many different things that he said. I don't even want to go into it again, but there were so many different things that he said in that Charlemagne thing that I respected and that I also understood in where he mentioned something along the lines of how sometimes some people make him out to seem crazy when he has a message or they, they make it seem like his message is crazy or whatever. And the reason why, I can't remember how he said it, but the reason why I understood where he was coming from with that was when he went on The Breakfast Club the first time, yeah, and he was trying to explain that um, like the glass ceilings that they put over your head. Yeah. He was trying to talk about the glass ceilings that they put over your head and he wanted to break that glass ceiling. All of the shouting and all of the emotions and all of the things that went around that got, the message just got lost because all you're seeing is the emotional and the frustration. Yeah, you're just seeing the, and he's not particularly articulating himself that great either. But if you listen to the message, he's actually got a point in there. And but, that's um, why he went with Jay to learn to articulate himself. Dame Dash was running in meetings. To be fair, I do love Dame Dash. That's why I'm one so of my I idols. Like, yeah, and you know, I, I and you do been... know that when you watch some of. Sorry, I cut you out, Carl. No, but I'm, I think what you're going to say is actually vital. So go. Um, now I was going to say that a lot of things that Dame Dash is saying is the realest shit. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, I'm seen, listening I've to seen, some of the yeah, stuff that, some, yeah, and yeah, like he's... maybe the way that he says it sometimes, yeah. it, it like doesn't come across well for a lot of people. Yeah, but. If you watch some of his recent interviews, he's oh. saying a lot of the same shit he was saying Back years ago. ago. But you know what the difference between him and Kanye is though? What I like, you don't get the message lost. He will shout that same message at you. But you can I still watch... pass him off as arrogant though. Maybe so, but you know what? You'll still understand what he's saying. And that's the reason why I fuck with him. I've watched that. Like The best thing for me is that, is it Billy O'Reilly interview oh, on too. television? Please, if you get a chance to watch it. It's so O'Reilly, him and Cameron and a, and a principal teacher. A principal teacher is that even a principal and if you just listen to that conversation and look at the way dame orchestrates it yeah bruv he's a genius even his last um vlad yeah, yeah, yeah he put it all over vlad he's like why are you here questioning i was saying the guy's name is john cross he's like go talk to john cross ask him why he's taking our culture i want to know why he can yeah. sit in this building and tell me and do you know what i started thinking to myself out culture vultures from early mm. and then i started thinking to myself what he was saying was so correct he was just saying what validates you as a individual who's never sat on the blocks never been from the hood to tell me what's urban you're gonna go and sign the best examples of urban music but you don't epitomize it one bit. How can you be given that responsibility? Because now you are speaking to my whole culture. Who are you? And there's a bag of people like that in England. I think that the new poet will call you out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, th- <laughs> I just think that sometimes with Dame, any- anyway, it seemed because I, as a younger, when I was watching some of his stuff, I kind of like I wasn't really looking at them. I'm just seeing this guy wilding out. I loved him. I'm just looking at the, this guy wilding out. I look back at some of. I'm listening to what he's saying now, and I'm like. He's been saying this. This is not even new. He's been saying this for time. And now what's happening is a lot of people are regurgitating what he's saying and passing it off like, like that's not what um, um, Dame's been on from early. Uh, you he's re- been on a, you he's seen the video been on ownership from, from early. Fam. Have you seen the video of him busting in the meeting at Def Jam? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's a classic. Did you see that? It's like, uh, how could you have a meeting about my artist and I'm not here, another my staff are here? And then that's he, a mad thing. But then he <laughs> wants an answer and he's not getting it. And everyone will say, but he's aggressive, but he's asking uh-huh. the same question over and over. And if you answer that question, and do you know one thing is, he's emotional, but he wants a logical explanation. And he's getting emotional because he can't get a logical explanation. Mm. And I fuck with that frame of mind. Because every time I'm emotional, it's because I'm confused. And when I'm confused for too long, and I know someone else has the information, I get angry. So mm. I'm like, why are you not giving it to me? Mm. Why are you not giving me this info? I know you've got it. You've not... Like, that shit gets me so angry, fam. Shout out to Dame. <sighs> Hopefully one day when he comes to the country and that. <sighs> Chucky, can we make a pack? If he comes to this country, even to visit, and man knows he's at Big Ben, we have to get in contact with him. Yeah, of course. We have to get Dame Dash here. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'll pull out all the stops. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
You think I'm joking, <laughs> so, I'm so serious, fam. And it's just going to be a dame that I might not even talk. I'm going to just sit here and watch him and say, Chucky, you're great at this. Yeah, nah, there's loads of things to ask dames. <laughs> there's loads of things to ask dames. Anyway, um, hashtag half class podcast. I'm going away tomorrow, man. Where are you going to? Class, f- um, Jamaica. Amazing. Yeah, man. How long are you going for? Like 12 days. I'm going to mm. go and meditate. Yeah, go see some family. Mind, and oh, yeah, God man, bless, man, and just vibe. Well, I mean, I'm gonna link up with Cash Tastic as well. Serious? Yeah, I'm he was the first man to go through Windrush, boy. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna see if I can f- um, film something with him out there. Um, that will be incredible. Oh, Chucky, if you can do that, throw that on the channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I would love to do. Hashtag epic. And yeah. can we just say anyone that listens to the podcast and wants to help me and Chucky do that idea, I say we just go for it. Which idea? Say it again. The idea where in which we go and get all the individuals from the past that didn't get the proper recognition they deserve for giving us the opportunity to feed our kids today and we put on a one-off show where we get people that are very, very current today to reenact some scenarios or some of the music and tell a story to a brand new audience that will actually understand today's music from looking at the past and say, you know what? Yeah. That's why their man rate D-double so much and that's why their man... I would just D-double, love to do something like that. Generals... Classic. I would just love for something like How that. How sick would it actually be to see man be, them uh, today? Yeah. Like, just doing old school. So, like, imagine Stormzy comes out like, ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah. T- hey, t- hey, I would go, go no. Hey, did, you go to the, did you go to the D-double one in in Island? In Izzy? In, in, in Angel. It was an Angel. No, nah, I got kids now. No, 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 no. I didn't oh, go okay. to I got no. to look after these kids. I'm done. I don't even know how I'm here now. Man, I am. I'm really... No, it's just, right, I, well, I think that was his first headline show, but that that show was a madness. Was though. it crazy? It was mad. I've seen him so many times out, yeah. and I'm t- I've seen him in his prime mm. one yeah, time, same. and I and I snuck, at, bro. I snuck. I was. I wanted to go to this so bad. I'm going to East London to watch it. I had mm. to get back so quickly though, because like mm. I said, Big. everyone was a target back then. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Was I was a target. These times I'm wearing a flipping Levi's Type One. No, but yeah, yeah, that's another story. Be cool.